Hello, I'm Atuba George. I welcome you to this broadcast and, and, and I bless God for this great opportunity. I count it as a rare privilege to bring God's truth to you. And I, I appreciate your time watching and, and sharing this broadcast. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you today. You are opening your truth to our hearts. And we are seeing the reality of your word. Thank you for the burdens that are being lifted right now. Yokes that are being destroyed in the life of everyone watching. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I give you praise. Amen. Jesus mighty name amen praise God now I said this week we are uh, talking about God's financial system God's financial system you see a lot of believers don't understand this sometimes it's important you, you sit back and ask yourself what's the concept of the gospel why why did we get born again why do we follow Jesus what is God's plan for our lives see sometimes you just think because that's how it has been communicated we we are here to please God so that at the end of the day we will make heaven they say oh make heaven your goal okay so what happens here and lots and lots of people have cheated themselves out of life because they were preparing for heaven now heaven is real of course heaven is real praise God but you see because they didn't understand exactly what God was communicating so they misinterpreted his word and then they communicate the wrong thing to us until we began to find out for ourselves that this is deeper than what we were told. Praise God. So, you begin to look at scriptures and you find out that God, everyone God met in scriptures, from Genesis to Revelation, everyone God that had an encounter with God and followed true with the Lord, they ended up being prosperous. See? They ended up being prosperous. There is no one that you find that God was involved with his life that he didn't do well in life. No one. So what's the secret? Now, you know, sometimes you meet people who say, Pastor, I've been faithful in church. I am a worker in church. Uh, even pastors. Sometimes pastors struggle. And they share with you their struggles. You'll be wondering, oh, what are you talking about? Yeah. And, and you see, they say, look, I've been committed. I've been trying to do everything right. But things just don't seem to be working. I've been in that shoes also. I've been there. <laughs> I've shared with you on this broadcast before one season that I had to quit. I said, Lord, several years ago, I said, Lord, it's not working. So when you're ready, you tell me, I'll be back. And I packed my stuff and left the city that God told me to be. Until the word of the Lord came to me and says, go back. I came back and then the Lord sat me down and began to teach me things no man has ever said to me before. And right from that moment, I said, whoa. This is easy. And you know, see, John tells us that his commandments are not grievous. I, I found that to be true. You see, but because you don't know, you grow up in the dark. And you think, oh, it's so hard to please God. Man, the ways of God, they are hard. No, brothers and sisters, they are not hard. You know why they are not hard? God never required your strength to do his will. Never. All he requires of you is you make the decision. Yes, Lord, I will follow. 
and then you turn your attention to follow him. And guess what? He gives the grace. Abusha Kali Abahada. He gives the grace. And you begin to walk in that grace. And what was difficult before becomes so easy. You, you say to people like, it's normal. It's, it's, it's simple. Anyway, what, what, what are you talking about? Simple, praise God. You know, I, I hear that a lot of times. Like, Please stop saying it's simple. Don't, you know, very simple. Stop saying it's very simple. It, but it is. He shows you what to do. And all he's telling you is, get up and do it. And then he said, but, but I, I can't stand up. He says, you know, the, the man at the pool of Bethsaida, I told you this before, Jesus just told him, stand up, take up your bed, and go home. I've been invalid for 38 long years. And all this man is telling me is to stand up. If I could stand up, think I'll be here. But guess what? Nobody helped him up. He got up. So Jesus gave him the command, stand up. And he got up. Praise God. Now that's how easy God's word is. That's how easy the kingdom of God is. Very easy. But you see, it comes by his command. Like I was telling you yesterday, you've got to be in a personal relationship with him to hear and understand his command. So we see from Genesis, everyone God worked with. He blessed them. They did well in life, not just spiritually. They weren't, they weren't um, outcast for life. And then they were, you, you find out that God took care of them. We read about Elijah. He, he declared a famine in the land. But guess what? God told him where to go to. And he got there. And what was coming to feed him? Ravens. It's amazing. God didn't say, you will find ravens. They'll be killing them every day and roasting them to eat. No, God said, I have commanded the ravens there to feed you. So guess what? While he was there, birds would bring food to you. Think about it. Just think about it. And when that was over, God says, hey, go to Zarephath. I have commanded a widow there to feed you. And he obeyed the Lord. He saw the woman and she did what God commanded her to do. And they were all blessed. Praise <laughs> God. Now what does that tell you? God has a plan. He met Abraham. He says, get out of your father's house and go to a land that I will show you. And this man packed his household. And they left to a, a place unknown to them. But guess what? We still have on earth today a cut out land that belongs to Abraham, the nation of Israel. Think about it. Everyone that ever walked with God and obeyed him. Now we come to Jesus and Jesus began to speak certain words that should make you think. You see, that's what the word of God does. That's what the Bible does to us. It provokes thoughts in our heart and what should you do with those thoughts go to the lord with those thoughts and begin to pray about it i'm reading something to you in in matthew chapter 6 and i'm reading from verse 19. jesus speaking now if you if you have a red letter edition bible it is written in red jesus was speaking here and then he says i want you to follow these words now he says lay now, let me read from the New King James Version. So I don't start reading thou and dying. Praise God. Now, Jesus speaking, he says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Now, that is a command. When he says do not, it means do not. Do not lay up for yourselves. Follow the construction of the words. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Now someone reads this and says, mm, Jesus doesn't want us to have money. But no, that's not what it means. He, okay, follow. 
Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moats and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Okay? Verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven where neither moats nor rust destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. Jesus wasn't saying don't lay treasures for yourself. He was actually telling you where it's safest to keep your money. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah. So he says, don't lay up. So laying up treasure for yourself is not the problem. It is where you lay it that is the problem. Are you getting this now? So he says, don't lay it on earth. Now that means don't lay it in any bank on earth. Don't lay it in your bed. Don't dig a hole and keep your treasure. He says, lay it up in heaven. Now, don't say, hmm, hmm. How do I lay up treasure in heaven? I'm going to be talking to you about this in this series. But you see, think about it. What does Jesus mean by don't lay treasures for yourself or your own hands? What does he mean by that? And why is he telling us this? Now, let's go further. He says, verse 21, verse 21, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now we go to verse 24. Verse 24. It says, No man, no one can serve two masters. Follow this now. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. First, Jesus said, Don't lay treasure. Up, don't lay up treasure for yourself here on earth, but lay, lay it in heaven. Then now he comes here and says, nobody can serve two masters. Why? He says, it's either you will hate one and love the other. It's either you will be loyal to one and despise. So when you're loyal to A, you will despise B. Now how does that work? When A and B tells you, I want to see you by 10 a.m., who are you going to obey? See? If you say, okay, I will go to A, it means then that you are despising B. If you say, I will go to B, then you are despising A because all of them have given you command, I want to see you at this time. That's how it works. And that's the truth. So, Jesus now expressed what he's saying. So you don't think he's talking about something ambiguous. He says, you cannot serve God and mammon. Now, let's put this in the what he just said in again. He says, no man can serve two masters. Who are the two masters? God and mammon. So he says, for either he will hate the one. Let's say, if he hates mammon, and he will love God. If he hates, if he loves mammon, he will hate God. Are you following? You can't do the two. So he says, he will be loyal to one and despise the other. So if he's loyal to God, he will despise mammon. If he's loyal to mammon, he will despise God. See? So when somebody says, me, I cannot give my tithes to anybody. Now why is he saying that? See? Because he's being loyal to mammon. And then he's despising the instruction of God. Are you getting it now? Therefore, verse 25. Therefore I say to you. Watch this now. He just said, you cannot serve God and mammon. Then he comes here and says, therefore. Meaning, as a result of this. So look, you can't serve God. And mammon, you can't serve both of them at once. You've got to choose who you will serve. Now, this is what I tell you based on that. Praise God. And what does it say? What does it say? Do not worry about your life. Praise God. 
Do not worry about your life. Taking your mind off mammon. That's what Jesus was telling us to do. So you take your mind off mammon. And how do you do it? Say the first step is do not worry about your life. Praise God. Now we're going to continue tomorrow because we're out of time right now. This, thing, this is going to be an interesting series. I tell you, don't miss anything any one of it and share it with your friends tell others about this 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 broadcast and let them enjoy what you're enjoying god bless you i'll see you tomorrow bye bye